Today, we're gonna see if the AI algorithms on this Asus motherboard can detect automatically which one of these 12900K CPUs has the best silicon. The Asus SP feature. SP stands for silicon prediction. It is probably the single most valued feature of an Asus motherboard, probably starting since like the Z390 age. Essentially what it does is it takes the voltage readings of the CPU and spits out an arbitrary number telling you how good the chip is. It's a really crude way of explaining it, but just bear with me on this one. So the SP feature is pretty much the larger the number, the larger your dick size is on Reddit. Everyone on Reddit and in forums and stuff what they they just they just use SP now. They don't even use like voltage versus frequency. They're just like, hey bro, what's your SP number? In my opinion, it's insanely idiotic to even compare hardware in the first place, but here we are. The amount of sales that Asus has generated from this one feature alone is out of control. MSI and Gigabyte, you gotta get on this shit, seriously. It is completely out of control. There are people in my Discord that literally bought an extra Asus motherboard just to get the SP number of their chip. Let that sink in. They spent $500 to get an SP number. An arbitrary SP number. Okay, okay, now that that's out of the way, does the SP number actually work? Like, 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 nonsense aside, does it actually have a function or value as an overclocker? Well, the goal of today's video is we're gonna find out. Is the Asus marketing on this one all bullshit? Well, how big is your SPP number? Okay, so how we're gonna do this, we're gonna label these one, two, Three, okay. Also, for some crazy reason, I have almost doubled my supporter count in the Discord in this last month of December. It's actually crazy. Thank you to everyone, all the newcomers to the community, all the new supporters. I couldn't have bought in three 12900Ks without you guys. So now that these are labeled, I'm actually not going to stick it in this motherboard right away. I'm gonna stick it in this MSI Z690 Edge. And why am I gonna do that first? Well, just because so that way I can't cheat, right? So here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna put all CPUs at 5.2 gigahertz, okay? I'm going to start them off at 1.35 volts, LLC mode, mad, mad mode four, okay? Now, I'm gonna stick these CPUs into that motherboard one at a time. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run Cinebench R20, okay? Cinebench R20, okay? Then, what we're gonna do, three runs. If the CPU passes three runs of Cinebench R20 at 1.35 volts, we then lower it to 1.34 volts. We do three more runs. If it passes, 1.33. If it passes, 1.32, etc., etc., etc. Then eventually we will hit a spot where the CPU B saws and blue screens. And that will be our silicon quality voltage at 5.2 gigahertz. We're gonna be using the exact same motherboard, XMP kit, same radiator, same CPU cooler, all, all the same thing. So that one is gonna be for our testing. And what's the goal of all this? Well, actually, I just wanna see if the ASUS number that it spits out, if there actually is any value to that thing or if it's just marketing bullshit, right? So that's what we're gonna be doing here. Then once we achieve all of the numbers, we're gonna stick all three of the CPUs into this motherboard see what SP number it spits out and see if the SP numbers of these chips correlate with my findings. And that's it. All right, let's throw in number one and see what we got here. Okay, so we got five, two. We don't really care about the ring. We're gonna set that to 45. And let's go to 
CPU core and 1.35. Digital mode four. Okay, all right, let's save and exit. Okay, scratch that. I just did a quick run and the voltage overshot like crazy. So we're actually gonna go mode six. Um, that should give us a little bit of more droop that we're aiming for. Okay, let's do a quick run here. We got 1.35. Let's see if it passes. Yeah, the temperatures are quite high. 250 watts, right? So if we can bring these V-Core numbers down, it's gonna be very beneficial to us, right? So we're gonna do this three times in a row to see if it passes. All right, what's even going on here? I'm all the way down to 1.22 volts and it's still passing. So like, it just goes to show you that you cannot use Cinebench as a moniker for stability. Like this, like we're drooping down to 1.16 at 5.2 gigahertz. Like, nah, man, nah, this would not be stable in the game. But for the purposes of what we're doing, this should be fine. Okay, we're on run number three, and I believe we have found the minimum voltage for this run. So I think we're at 1.215 volts for this one. So clearly I grossly overestimated the voltage needs for Cinebench, right? No, nowhere near 1.35, nowhere near. Let's see if this finishes up. If it does, then this is it. Yeah, all right. So CPU number one was 1.215 volts in BIOS. All right, let's throw in CPU number two and repeat the whole process. Okay, the results for CPU number two, 1.325. Let that sink in for a second. 1.325. Um, these are two completely different classes of product. I did not expect to see a gap or a delta this large between two different CPUs. This one is essentially like a 12900KS, if you will. This one, like... So I guess I didn't overshoot my initial uh, V-Core numbers. This one was just a freak accident. But, um, yeah, I don't even know what to say about that. I guess the 10 nanometer process has some massive variance between it. So, like, I, I'm the first person to say that you shouldn't be bidding. Like, bidding is a complete waste of time. But seeing the difference here, uh, I might have to go back on that statement. I, I, I uh... I'd be pretty upset if I had this chip, I'm not going to lie. Then again, the other argument is, is the difference between these two chips going to have a meaningful gaming difference, right? Maybe we'll check that after. Okay, results for number three. 1.290. So this is perfect. We have a clear winner, a god chip over here. We have a trash can, trash bin, <laughs> paperweight. And we have a middle of the road chip over here. So this one should have the highest SP score, worst SP score, and a middle of the road one. So the fun part begins. Let's throw them into this motherboard and let's see if Asus is full of shit. Okay, so we're gonna start with CPU number two. Now you cannot look at this number here exactly because we're gonna be focusing on the p cores so you have to actually go into ai tweaker here and then it will tell you the p core sp and the e core sp okay so we're ignoring this one the the number down here takes the average of the two so forget that but for the p cores we are looking at a p core sp of 88 okay so we're gonna write this down sp 88 okay now let's do cpu at number three okay so cpu number three has an average sp of 86 
a P Core SP of 96 and 68. So the P Core went up quite a bit. E Core, not so much. So SP 96. SP 96. And we got 88, 96. Now, let's see what the GOAT does. Okay, so CPU number one. We have an average SP of 102. We have a P core SP of 113. So it looks like this whole SP thing is, is legit. Asus is not full of shit. That's wild, 113, man. Oh God, I am a lucky SOB. All right, so 113 S. P. Wow, so that was completely legit. Okay, so if you actually want to do the math, the SP difference between these two is 28%, but the voltage difference is only 9%. So uh, the Asus SP number kind of inflates a little bit, makes it look a lot better than it actually is, right? But a 10% or I guess a 9% voltage difference is quite a large jump in terms of heat and power draw just to maintain 5.2 gigahertz, right? Cool, I did not expect that. Okay, so obviously this is only a sample size of three CPUs. There are reports out there of like misdiagnosed SP numbers. Those are probably true, I have no idea, or who knows, right? But it does seem to have some validity of how it works. And it makes perfect sense. All it does is it pulls the VID of the CPU, spits out a number. It's kind of like Weight Watchers, right? It's like you're allowed this many points for this many calories per day. The Asus motherboard is like, oh, you need this much, vo you need this much voltage for this much frequency. This is your Weight Watchers number. So there's no reason why Gigabyte and MSI can't, or and ASRock, can't incorporate their own SP number. They're giving away way too many sales to Asus for this singular feature. But it does work though, it seems like it's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, the caveat, does it matter? No. Should you buy an Asus motherboard for this one feature? No. Comparing your SP number to other people online is a complete waste of time. It doesn't change anything. The only time this feature could be valuable is when you're bidding CPUs in a large scale. Maybe it's just faster doing it that way. But even then, you would still want to like validate the SP number. You don't wanna, you don't wanna throw away like an SP60 that might possibly be misdiagnosed as like an SP1000, right? So even then, you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's a dick measuring tool, that's all it is. And the funny thing about that is, I always have the biggest dick when it comes to the SP. The reason why I say it doesn't matter is because it doesn't change anything. The CPU, like let's say I have that number three CPU. I still have that number three CPU. I found the voltage that it worked at and that's just the voltage that it works at. Me knowing some arbitrary number doesn't do anything unless you're some reddit warrior it actually doesn't have a function you know what i mean so that's why i'm saying don't worry about it but it is a pretty cool feature that i wish the other motherboard vendors would get on board with even though it, it is arbitrary and useless right it's just you know what i mean so anyway here's another bonus for you if you are using that msi z690 edge motherboard like i was for the test bench here um you can take your voltage at mode six load line override voltage and you can kind of see like where your sp number is based on the three cpus that i have and the voltages that i gave you right so if your 12900k does 1.3 volts you would know it's in between that SP88 and that SP96 or whatever, or that 98. You know it's in between there, right? So you can be like, oh yeah, I got like an SP94. You just do the math, right? So now you might ask, what is the maximum frequency that these SPs can achieve? I don't have time to do that today, but if you guys do want me to do that, leave a comment down below letting me know that you would like to know what the maximum frequency of all these SPs are. Anyway, guys, hope you liked the video. Again, Again, thank you to all the supporters and if you like the content hit that subscribe button do all that YouTube SEO stuff like share subscribe comment down below how big your SP is
and I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.